Such a cool, versatile little craft that can add so much to your tabletop games or dioramas. This is one build you're going to want to try, and I'll show you how to do it this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week is a fun little craft, these campfires here. And for me, it was actually a challenge by a friend of mine who's actually a sensei of mine for 11 years in jiu-jitsu and karate. I was playing a game of D&D one night at a friend of ours' house who also happens to be um, a sensei at the same dojo. And I had brought a whole bunch of my crafts over there. Everybody was all set, ready to play. We had a whole bunch of stuff out. And they saw these bonfires that I brought over, which I did earlier in the year on the channel. You can check those out later if you'd like. And they loved them, but they said, you know, for a campfire, they're just a little too big. So I was given the challenge to come up with some sort of campfire, because let's be honest, how many times have you heard, you know, I want a short rest, I want a long rest, or just in general, a campfire is a great thing to have for a craft for playing uh, any tabletop game. So... Challenge accepted. One of the cool features about this is that not only does the flame flicker, but the coals underneath flicker as well. And I'll show you how to do that. So if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, we're gonna kick this video off by grabbing an LED. And we're going to split both leads on it, uh, 180 degrees from the center of the diode. And we're going to make a couple of marks on a one inch miniature base. Don't worry about the holes that you see in there already. Um, just follow, you know, what you see me doing here and right now. I tried using a pin vise, it didn't work well, so I just heated up a pin and used that to melt the holes. And you want to offset that like so, because this first diode is going to be for the coals underneath the fire. So you're going to take the first lead on the diode, and it's in my left finger underneath my thumb. And that's going to be for the negative side of the battery that we're going to put in here. And now we want to bend the positive side of the lead, which is the longer section of the LED, uh, with about maybe an eighth of an inch. So we can slide the battery underneath both of them and it will power it just like that. Now comes time for the second LED. And we're going to use one battery to power both of these. And you want these holes opposite of each other. Again, don't worry about that extra hole there. I was kind of practicing uh, with this uh, base here. So just bend the LEDs like you see me uh, doing here in the video. And you want to leave a little bit of a um, wire sticking straight up from the actual LED, as you can see there in my right hand. Uh, that's so that we can elevate the fire from uh, the wood that's going to be in the campfire. So just split these LEDs um, leads. And you want to make sure that you cross over the correct one. So as you can see, two of those leads are touching from two different diodes. If you mix those up, it won't work. And then the same goes for the positive portion of the lead that you're going to bend on the bottom. Now these two right here, those can touch. And you'll know pretty quick if you messed up because when you insert that battery, this won't work. But if you do it right, both LEDs will light up and you'll be all set. So now we break out some green stuff, mix this up really good, and we're going to use this to form our rock structure around the campfire. Now you can use anything here. You can use Play-Doh, uh, you can use any type of uh, sculpting clay, you can use Milliput if you want to. I just always have a bunch of green stuff laying around, and you're not really using a lot. Um, for the project, so that's what I decided to use here. Now we're going to sculpt this on some parchment paper because it'll stick a tiny little bit, just enough to sculpt, but it won't stick on it once the green stuff cures, so it's really good to work on. And we're going to use this clay sculpting tool to cut in some stone around all the green stuff. Now you can find a link in the description below to all of my Amazon links for all the products that I use and all the tools that I use in this video and all of my videos if you're interested in picking any of those items up. And we're going to use the other end of this clay sculpting tool, the softer portion now, to really define those lines that we made earlier with the metal side of the clay sculpting tool. Now you might have seen me use this clear orange paper 
in my Dwarven Pillar video. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to rough up both sides of it because when we lay this over the LED, it's going to help disperse the light and, uh, and make it look really good. If you leave it clear, you don't rough it up, it doesn't look as good. All right, now cutting that slit in there, adding a little bit of hot glue, we can then form the um, this orange film here into like a cone. And we're going to cut just the tip of it off and try and get it close to the diameter of the fire pit. And we'll get it exact here in just a second. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen me use this clay sculpting tool. I use it in a lot of my videos for a lot of different things. All we're doing now is just adding a little bit of stone texture around the campfire. Now here is where we're going to get the exact dimensions of this uh, lens here for the campfire. And don't worry about you know getting the black ink on it. You're not going to see that in the future. What you want to make sure is that you have it small enough so that it fits in nice and isn't all crinkled. Um, when you place it uh, down here. And I'm just using a little bit of super glue to hold it in place. Now, once that cures, we can take some of this surface primer by Vallejo and hit up just the green stuff. You want to wait about 24 hours for that to cure, fully cure, before you start painting it. And again, not a big deal if you get some of this on the orange lens. Now we're going to take a little bit of gray. As you can see, I did some of these stones and a little bit of brown as well. And I'm just going to do a light dry brush of uh, a lighter gray over the brown and dark gray that you see here already. All right, now once that all dries, we're going to grab a little bit of Nuln Oil. You could also use some Agrax Earthshade if you have that instead. That would work, uh, you know, just as fine. Obviously add a little bit more of a brown tint to the stone instead of a, a darker gray color. All right, now this stuff is a lot of fun to work with. This is a UV resin. You want to place some of this around all of that orange lens and around the base of the fire and coat the entire thing. And the nice thing about this is it won't set up until you hit it with some UV light. So it gives you plenty of time to work with it and apply it exactly how you want to. Now once that's placed on there, we're going to grab some of these little beads, these clear beads, place them on top of the uh, orange lens here. And it's going to act like coals. So when this lights up, uh, the light will reflect a little bit off of those, making them have a little bit of a glowing effect. And we're going to knock some of these down here in just a minute with some paint as well. So once those are kind of covered in some of that resin, we'll grab our UV light, hold it on there for two or three minutes and you're all set to move on to the next step. Now I'm just grabbing a little bit of black paint, uh, just touching some of these coals. And you know, just look up some pictures of campfires if you have to online to help you out with the paint process on that. And these are just a few twigs from my uh, yard outside. And I'm just gonna super glue these right into place. And you wanna grab a decent amount of them so that you don't see a lot of the orange film underneath them. And this is a little bit of accelerant to just help cure the super glue quickly so that I can keep moving. Now once that's all dried up, we're going to take some black paint and do, you know, kind of a medium to heavy dry brush over the wood because typically, you know, in a campfire, it's, it's going to be black, right? All like charcoal. And then we'll grab a little bit of Vallejo pigment. We'll go around the stone. We'll hit up some of the ash. And again, it doesn't matter if you get some of it on that orange film. Uh, it's just going to add kind of to the effect. And then grabbing some MIG pigment uh, fixer just to kind of set that pigment in place and lock it in so that it's not going to get all over you when you're all done. All right, now we're going to work on the fire. We're going to take a standard size glue stick and cut the flame roughly to the shape that you'd want to see it on this fire. It's going to be pretty small. You don't want it too big. The bigger the flame, the less light is going to reflect through the glue stick and the less light you're going to get on your campfire. So just keep that in mind when you make the size of your flame. All right, now I just melted a hole in the bottom just to kind of hold it in place. And you want to apply a little bit of heat to this glue stick to give it its transparent effect 
you can see how it clears up real nice. And you want to be careful you don't, you know, burn the glue and have it all turn black on you. You can also dip it in hot water if you're worried about working with the, uh, the flame. Now again, we have that little hole in the bottom of that. We're going to place that right over the diode, add a little bit of hot glue, and press that right onto the diode and the orange lens. Now we're just going to add some swirling effect. We're almost done. We're going to go in a swirling motion around each one of these flames, working our way all the way up to the tip. We'll do one, then we'll do the other, and when we do the other flame, as you can see, I'm going to wrap around the entire thing just to kind of bring it all together so it doesn't look like two separate flames here in the fire. And just keep working the flame until you have it exactly how you like. When you get to the tip, you're going to want to add just a little bit of hot glue to have that you know classic flame look. You can see I'm holding the hot glue gun in place and then blowing on the hot glue to help cure it. That way I can add the little you know, flicker of the, the flame effect. And if you wait, you know, if you don't wait long enough, you can see I kind of screwed up right there. You're just gonna keep pulling the glue. So just hold it in place until you have the flame look exactly how you want it and it cools before you give it a, a, a quick tear to rip off the remaining portion. And there you go, there's your campfire. Alright, so by now, you've been watching my channel hopefully for a while, and hopefully your fears of working with diodes and batteries is starting to go away. You can see all the different um, options out there for adding lights to your crafts. I feel they really add a lot of immersion to the table when players see all these little flickering lights everywhere. It just kind of helps with the immersion. And sometimes it could be a little bit of a challenge to hide that little CR2032 battery. Um, but, you know, again, challenge accepted, right? You could figure out a way creatively to sneak that in somewhere in your craft and get some lights in there. So don't be afraid to, um, you know, try and experiment with new things while you're crafting. That being said, next week we're going to jump back into our trap series with one of the coolest traps to date. It's so exciting. I absolutely love the way this build turned out. I think you're going to love it too. Also, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on next week's video. And while you're down there hitting that like button, take a look at the merchandise and also consider heading on over to Patreon. I got a bunch of really cool tiers over there and it's something where you'll be supporting the channel. You'll get something in return. It's a win-win. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.